I have all my blocks together for my tiger quilt. This is the exciting part. I'm going to start assembling my blocks into the finished quilt top. Now, I really like the way Legit Kits recommends assembling your blocks. You can certainly do them row by row, but I like the way they recommend because they do it blocks into bigger blocks and then into the final quilt. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing I'm going to do is join them each in pairs. Let's do that first. Now the layout is illustrated in the legit instructions, but you're just joining in pairs. And just like I use the pin and point method to join my sections into blocks, I'm using that same pin and point method to join my blocks to each other. So one pin goes into the intersection at the bottom of the block, right where the sewing lines meet and then up through the same intersection on the corresponding block. So they're still right sides together, and then your pin should be straight up and down perpendicular to the paper. I use one pin on the sewing line just to check to make sure everything lines up, and if it's on the sewing line on the top, it should be on the sewing line on the bottom. So just a couple pins to check the sewing lines match up, and then I'll take out the upright pins. I'll also do a couple pins along that sewing line just to make sure that really important intersections match up and take your time and adjust. Really get a good fine tuning here to make sure that your intersections and your points are all gonna match up when you sew this seam. But the pin on the sewing line is really the key to show you that everything lines up and you are good to go. Now, as soon as I sew that seam, I will remove the paper from the seam allowances. This just makes it so much easier, not only to iron that seam, but also to remove the papers adjacent to it at a later time. You don't want any of that paper caught underneath the seam allowance when you iron your seam open or to the side. So I just take it out now before ironing. Use tweezers to help you get out any little fine pieces or any sharp angles. And then I might also remove any paper that is in a sharp angle so that it doesn't get caught under a seam and I can't access it later. Now, as I mentioned before, I don't trim my blocks before joining and this right here is the reason why. Now, when I trim that seam, I'm trimming both blocks at the same time. So instead of trimming one individually, I just trim them both. I like to press my seams open where possible, and sometimes it's not. If I have a bunch of intersections on one side of the seam and no intersections on the other side, I will press towards the no intersection side. But as long as it allows me to, I will press the seam open. Now here's a little tip for making your life easier while you're sewing. This paper will get caught underneath that seam allowance, and while it's not the biggest deal, if I just pull that paper to the top and then sew over it, it just makes it so much easier to take off that paper later. So anywhere that a little piece of paper is gonna get caught under a seam allowance, just pull it to the top. It won't hurt anything. So once all your pairs are sewn together, we're going to sew into quads. Now there's a diagram in the legit kits instructions that are included with each kit. So don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you, refer to that diagram. But essentially A1 and A2 
We'll now go with B1 and B2. So instead of doing A across the whole row, we're gonna do just that block, that larger block of A1, A2, B1, B2, and then A2, A3, 4 with B3, 4. So we're gonna make just larger blocks all along the way until the last seam left is just that horizontal seam. So just like I did with pairs of blocks, I'm going to combine pairs of blocks into quads of blocks using the pin and point method. You can choose to trim your blocks on the seam allowance if you want, but for me, I just don't find it necessary. I'm going to pin liberally with or without trimming. I'm going to check intersections with or without trimming. So for me, I might as well go ahead and pin and sew and then trim both sides at the same time. And then once your quads are assembled, you're going to put quads together. Once you get all your blocks pinned and you check to make sure everything lines up, you can actually remove the paper on the back. This will just make it a little bit easier after you've sewn the seam. You don't have to tear off the paper from the seam allowance and then try and get it out. Just tear it off in big pieces from the back. You don't need it anymore. I do like to use scrap paper just on the back of the block while I'm sewing so that any seam allowances that are pressed in a certain direction will not get skewed in the other direction while I'm sewing. But those pieces of paper are a lot easier to remove with just one pull than a whole bunch of little pieces. Really take your time in pinning, making sure that vital intersections line up, especially where a light fabric and a dark fabric meet. It's pretty obvious if your seam allowance is a little off, so it's worth it to take your time and double check that everything's gonna line up once you sew that seam.
If you're doing the grid format, at the very end, you only have the four quadrants left to sew together. It's just three seams, and that's the best part. I also do a line of stay stitching all around the edge, and then go ahead and take those papers out too. So by the time I sew my last three seams, I have very little paper to take out. You could absolutely trim your seams with a rotary cutter even after sewing, but for me, I'd rather just sit and trim with scissors than have to get up and rotary cut. Also, I would rather use scissors because there's so much bulk on these seams that a rotary cutter is likely to slip and I just don't need to take that chance. Are you ready? This is the best part.